is having children a possibility and what would you have to do? Um, well, it is a possibility. Um, it's more dangerous for me to become pregnant and to carry a baby full term. I'll, I'll be what they call a high risk pregnancy. Um, but it is possible. Um, unlike a lot of the guys with cystic fibrosis are, um, I don't know what you call the guy version of infertile, but they can't have kids. Um, it's not the case with girls usually. Um, what I will have to do is um, have my fiancé test to make sure that he isn't a carrier. Um, because if you'll remember the, the Punnett square, mm -hmm. if he's a carrier and I have it, then my kids have a 50% chance of also having it. Um, and they will be carriers. Um, so that's not really something I want for my kids. And he doesn't want that either. So um, once we get tested, we'll go from there. And, you know, adoption is always a possibility. Last year, I got diagnosed with cystic fibrosis-related diabetes, which is something that happens. It's like normal course of being <laughs> a cystic fibrosis person. So there are um, one of the things that is um, really special about cystic fibrosis is that it's progressive. Um, so as you get older, your one of the things that happens is that your lung function gets worse. Um, so it makes it harder to do the things that you used to be able to do. For instance, I run much slower now than I did in high school. Um, another one of the things that happens is that since cystic fibrosis affects your pancreas, um, it over time begins to impede your ability to make insulin, which is the main chemical that helps you break down sugar in your blood. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of diabetes. And there's the type 1 and type 2 people, but a lot of people don't know that there's also cystic fibrosis related diabetes. Um, so basically what happens is that over time um, my, my pancreas, the word that the doctor used with me was shriveled, I really hate that word, but shriveled, and um, I have, I'm progressively losing the ability to make insulin. Um, so that makes me like a type 1 diabetic. And then when you have these progressive infections, which are also um, very central to cystic fibrosis and in and of itself, um, you get what's, what's called cortisol. It's a stress hormone. And cortisol makes it to where it's very difficult for your body to use the insulin that it makes, which is like type 2 diabetes. So CFRD is very much a mix of type 1 and type 2. I can't make enough insulin, and I also can't use the insulin that I make. Um, so what's happened is I have, I now inject myself with insulin before I eat, um, which is very interesting because a CF person has to eat around 5,000 calories a day. So I'm always, always eating. <laughs> Last year, I uh, was, you know, it was my first year in grad school. My family and my doctors and my entire support system is in Oklahoma. Um, so I'm down here by myself and um, first of all, grad school has a lot of stress involved. I'm sure your, your mom would tell you all about it. Um, so that, you know, would raise the cortisol levels in my blood. This, you know, is all unbeknownst to me. And I got sick. And over, over time, you begin to realize, you know, when you're starting to get sick, you know, when you may need to go into the doctor and get what they call a pick line, um, which is kind of like an IV, but here instead of here. Um, but being my first semester in graduate school, being out on my own, I did not want to go to the doctor. I didn't think I had time to go to the doctor. And so I attempted to tough it out. Um, and this was from August to around Christmas by the time I finally um, got home. But what happens is if you, don't, when you start having an infection, um, your lung function plummets, basically. So I, I had gotten to the point um, where I could not walk up a hill to get to class. And um, once I got there, I, I couldn't breathe well enough to speak for a good 15 or 20 minutes. Um, I also, I found out later, had become diabetic. And the problem with having diabetes and not knowing about it is that, and especially if you have CF, is that you have to eat, like I've said, a ton which generally means a ton of carbs. 
And if you're doing that, your blood sugar, it just, it's like a roller coaster ride. So there would be times, um, they're not here right now because I picked them up for you, but um, I kept raisins here um, because there were times when I was too weak to get off the couch. And so I would be stuck here all day not having the strength to get up and I kept raisins within reach to be able to, to feed myself. Um, but um, eventually, um, I, I joke and say I made the mistake of going home and let my family and my mother, who's a doctor, see how weak I was. <laughs> um, and they, you know, immediately sent me to the doctor. Well, um, that was all well and good. They went to go and put in a pig line, and I'll explain a little bit more of what it is. Um, I don't know if you can see, I have a scar here. And uh, what they do is they, they put a catheter, which is a little tube, like they do with an IV, and the catheter goes from here to here. Um, so that the medicine can go directly near your lungs and into the thicker blood vessels that can't be harmed as easily. So as I was um, laying in this hospital bed getting this put in, the um, nurse didn't pay attention correctly. And so instead of putting 27 centimeters, which would have put it here where it's supposed to go, of catheter and she put it in 37. Um, and what that did was this, this little artery goes straight into your heart. And on the outside of your heart is what they call an electrical node. If you touch that, it's going to mess up the beating of your heart. And it sends it into fibrillations. Which, have you ever seen the, you know, clear? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's what they do to fix it. Um, it's the same kind of thing that happens in a heart attack. So basically, at 22 years of age, I had a heart attack. Um, which was not a fun experience. Um, I mean, it's a great story now, but it wasn't fun. Um, they, she did pull back on it before, um, before they had to do the thing, um, which, I mean, I was conscious for all of it, and I was, I, you know, in my head, I'm sitting there thinking, I really don't want to be shocked today. Please, mm -hmm. please don't shock me. So I didn't get shocked. But um, after that, you know, I received, I was receiving my antibiotics, but the problem was that my lung function, which had previously been around 90%, which is really high, um, had plummeted to 43%. So I was, I was very weak. I wasn't responding to antibiotics. It took me about a year to get even back up into the 80s. And um, so that's essentially what happens. Um, that's how I got diagnosed with diabetes, and hopefully it's not going to happen again. <laughs> that would be great. So. Sun. Is there anyone? Oh, it has begun. Oh, dear, you look so lost. As the red and tears are shed, this world you must have crossed, you said. You don't know me, and you even care Oh yeah She said You don't know me And you don't Wear my chains